We'll bring this meeting to the Nicolau City Council to order. Welcome administration, guests, and other members of council. If you will. Uh, Mayor Cook. Yes, ma'am. Councilwoman Grove. Present. Councilman Vaughn. Here. Councilman Shammy. Here. Councilwoman Wright. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. And Vice Mayor Eggleston. Here. All seven present. And as normal, the invocation will be by Chief Trustee. Father, we thank you for the day and your many blessings and the beautiful weather that you've blessed us with these past few days. We pray that you be in this meeting and let thy perfect will be done. Bless all the ones that have been affected by the awful hurricanes and storms. Bless our first responders, our troops, and their families. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Then I need a motion for the action on the minutes of 9 3. So moved. Second. Okay, so Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grove? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. 7 0 accepted. And I need a motion for the minutes of 9 16. So moved. Second. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grove? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Chimmy? Yes. Seven to zero accepted. Under communications. Mr. Lowry, would you like to speak about your communication? Please. Do I have my story saying something? Well, I didn't know whether you want to address that drone issue. Oh, no, 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 no. All right. You caught me off guard. I didn't know what you were talking about. <laughs> yeah. All right. No, with got, that, we'll have. I got a letter from Jake. With that, we'll have the city manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public. This is the city manager report. Under discussion topics, again, the 2025 Ohio Municipal League Conference, that is coming up. It is October 23rd to the 25th. Uh, again, myself, uh, Council Wright, uh, Councilwoman Wright, and Councilwoman Grow and Councilwoman Lindsay will all be in attendance. We are looking forward to that. It is too late to get the blocked out of the uh, hotel rooms. They are actually out of those uh, group rates. Uh, registration is still open, though. Should if anyone like, like to go to that who has not already signed up, just please give me an email, and we can get you signed up. Um, comprehensive land use plan. We are excited to start to early discussions with city council at their next work section. That is going to be on October 14th. Uh, I'm going to be working with Brian this week to finalize some discussion topics with you guys. But again, we are excited to bring that to you. 2025 capital improvement plan and CIP. Uh, first read and introduction will be 11-18-24. Uh, uh, and action will be on December 2nd. Work session dates with city council at the fire station 6 p.m. would be October 28th, 29th, and 30th. Um, there was brief discussion earlier in the week, uh, late last week, between myself and the mayor and Councilwoman uh, Eggleston, I mean Vice Mayor Eggleston, regarding a temporary budget. Um, ideally, we like to do the budgets that are uh, uh, effective January 1. Given that we have two new council members, I uh, would like council to discuss the possibility of doing a temporary budget. Um, what that would do is um, have temporary appropriations for January, February, March and allow Ms. Harris to close out, close out the year completely and we'll actually be working with actuals. There are some pros and cons with that. One of the cons is Ms. Harris is going to have to do essentially two budgets. One, a temporary budget for again January, February, March, and then the second budget once we go through the discussions. Sometimes every year when we have new council members bring, uh, come, we just bring it up for you guys to have that discussion. So you guys are more than welcome to have that open discussion now if you'd like. Um, so we are uh, wanting to know how council feels about working off a budget that's not complete versus wait until after the first of the year to do something that has actuals. Any comment? I think we should do a temporary budget at least for make it a little bit easier for Mrs. Wright and Mrs. Crow to understand. 
Go ahead, Mr. Bond. Uh, I guess my <clears throat> my thing is, I guess I would like to know what Colleen would like to do. Well, Ms. Harris does report to me, so it is a strong manager for foreign government. So whatever council does decide to do, we can bring that, I can instruct Ms. Harris to do so. Uh, Ms. Harris is going to want to default on doing a uh, non-temporary budget, so she don't have to do two budgets in a row, which is understandable. But again, it's, it's error on the side of caution for some of the new council members that may have not done a, a government budget before, where it looks like we're spending more than what we're bringing in until that year closes out. So every year when we do that budget a little earlier, it looks like we're spending more than we're bringing in. But by the time that year closes out, it does come back in the black. So it can go both ways. Mr. Bond is correct. It is a little bit extra work on Ms. Harris. Um, but she is a team player, and she'll do whatever council would instruct. Go ahead, Bill. Uh, I think we have two very intelligent new council members. Sure. And I think they would be able to grasp the budget during our budget talks. And we can do one budget instead of two. It, it doesn't make sense to do a temporary budget to me and then come back and do the full budget and basically have to repeat ourselves. Well, the temporary budget, she'll just put some numbers to get us through for the I next know. couple of years and it comes in. Whatever council wants to do, like I said, it's just a tool that for some new members, they like to see those actuals instead of just um, guesstimates, essentially. Anyone else? I personally have no problem with doing a temporary budget. And like Mr. Bridges said, the fact that we've got two new council members with possibly the balances at the end of the year, we would be able to do a budget that possibly would be a very true budget. I think when we do the one we're a little bit guessing as to how much more we're going to spend on the rest of the year versus how much is coming in. I will entertain a motion, you know, from somebody as to what you want to do. Go ahead, Bill. I move that we just do the one budget and two new council members, like I said before, are smart enough to understand and, and read and they won't have a problem doing that. Well, I have a second. Can, before I second, I, can I interject? Real Go quick? ahead. I think uh, we should ask the two new council members how they feel about it. I don't have a problem with that. I have no problem learning with her only doing it once. I hate for somebody to go through the trouble just for me to learn when I can just read about it. I feel the same way. It's pretty much, you know, read, study, figure it out, ask a question if I need to. I, I think I can probably handle it. Yeah. We have support up here as well, so I'll second. So a motion to only have one budget with no temporary budget. Correct. Um, Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? No. Mayor Cook? No. Councilwoman Grove? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. It passes I guess two. you've got your answer, Mr. Bridge. Thank you. That's the whole point of bringing it up to council so you guys can decide. We appreciate that. Um, in the future, if you guys have any questions about how that end comes in out, just please get a hold of me. I will walk you through it. Thank you for your opinion. Mr. Bridges, really quick. Yeah. I would like to note that you said that we are having a meeting on October 14th. Um, but that is Columbus Day. That's October so 15th. Would I'm we sorry. have it on the 15th? You would. Okay. Thank you for that correction. We're more than welcome to come sit on our day off, but I'll be in jury duty. So <laughs> <laughs> on my day off. It's my anniversary, so. <laughs> oh, I'll go enjoy that. All right. Thank you for that discussion. We appreciate it. Um, uh, moving on, reserves at Honey Creek and Meadow, Monroe Meadows. This exact stuff was on there last time. I just want to repeat it so council is on the same page. We are, we'll be meeting at the end of this week on Friday with the All Horton to continue on some discussions, especially with Haddock's Field. And I do have a phone call. I sent a calendar out, a uh, calendar invite out for Mr. Metzger from Monroe Meadows to get caught up with him regarding the term sheet um, for Monroe Meadows. So again, we still have some budgeting to go through on that. Um, that is a second step out of the first, out of from the second one, I mean from the first one, 
So as we establish the TIF, we'll go in and do the budgeting coming up next. Um, and to remind everyone, we have already established the TIF for DR Horton. The legislation coming up on October 21st is to establish the TIF for Monroe Meadows. Um, we will have Greg Daniels. He is our TIF attorney. He will be at present at the 1015 work session. He's going to give some, uh, some Q's and A's and some presentation on what a new community authority is and how that can be beneficial. I outlined, I do believe, um, some new community authority information to council maybe a few weeks ago. Please revisit that. I have a second one I'm going to give you guys, and it really compares what a port authority can do and then also um, what that new community authority can do, either separate or together, layered on there. So please review that. I'm going to finalize that uh, new outline that has the port authority on that. Send it out to council for this week. Please take a look at that. Greg is a master at these particular um, ways to... I guess, fund developments. So please come with some great questions. Um, he'll be able to answer everything that you guys put in front of him. But again, we are excited to bring him to the 1015 work session. New council member packet, documents sent to city council. I know there was quite a bit of, of attachments on that. They're gonna take some time to get through. It's not an exhaustive list. If we wanna add or take away, we more than welcome we can. But I would like to have next steps on that. I would like to work with Car uh, Councilwoman Grow because we established that when she first came in to get that new council packet together, maybe work with another council member or two to get their opinion on it as well. Um, but why don't you guys take some more time to digest all that because it is a lot of information and then maybe at the next meeting we talk about um, setting that group together to get that new, uh, new council packet together. Okay. Great. Um, policy and other items working on, again, Citizen of the Year, whenever council's ready to move forward with that, just let us know that plaque has already been decide, uh, designed. Um, upcoming legislation, uh, reserves at Honey Creek TIF legislation, Miami Valley lighting. What that does is um, all, our, all our street lighting um, that we have in the city, it is provi it's provided by Miami, Miami Valley lighting. And then every year, every couple of years, we would negotiate that contract. So right now I'm still going through the cost increases and some cost decreases from this contract cycle to the last. So as soon as that is done, I'm going to give that to council. That's either probably going to be the first meeting in, I mean, the second meeting in October or the first meeting in November. Uh, health insurance renewals, still waiting on that. Um, those usually come in around the first or second week of November. They usually send us back with so, quite a bit of an increase, but Ms. Harris tells them to send it back out to bid. And we usually come back last couple years, we've only averaged around a 9 to 10% increase every year, which is actually really competitive. So we're excited if we can get that again. Um, business continuation plan, uh, capital improvement plan and operating budget, share of contract and dispatching agreement, uh, collective bargaining unit contract. Uh, we had some second round of negotiations today. Um, I'm going through all the changes. Um, it's quite a bit this year um, compared to years past. There's a lot of language changes. Um, so once I get through all this information, I'm going to request that I have maybe two or three council members that can sit with me. Ultimately, you guys have to decide on this and vote on it. So in years past, we've always kind of talked about it as a group, opposed to us just having a final product come to you guys and you vote on it. So council can't be part of that process. Um, it is, like I said, significant amount of changes. I'm going to take probably the next week to go through those and digest those. And at the October 21st meeting, suggest that we form a small committee to look at that as a group. Uh, residential developments. Um, subdividers agreement is going to come pretty quickly to council, and that's going to be for DR Horton. Uh, DR Horton is getting ready to submit their final plat to your planning board. I do believe that they have a meeting scheduled <coughs> for the end of the month. Um, so that particular uh, development has multiple phases on that. So every time that they submit a final plat for phase two, phase three, the same process is going to go down. Um, so once we do that and the planning board approves that final plat and they make that recommendation to council, that's going to trigger Jake to issue a subdivider's agreement. In that subdivider's agreement, we're going to talk about warranties, uh, warranty bond. Performance bond may not be a thing because they're, they're supposed to have all the public improvements done um, before um, the final plat's approved. So if they do that, there is no performance bond needed because it will already be done. Mr. Kiko is working with them hand in hand to, to make sure those are done correctly. Um, additional discussion topics. I was not able to come to the 923-24 work session. I did watch bits of it on the internet. Um, my understanding of it is council would like some um, bonds to go to the voters for a new swimming pool. So I don't know how much of a discussion you guys got into the different types of bonds. Um, I'm assuming you just discussed general obligation bonds where you take this dollar amount, you divide it evenly, and you put it on your, on your citizens. We'd like council to explore revenue bonds. Um, I actually have another 
outline I'm doing that compares the two. Revenue bonds, you can actually use revenue generated from that facility to pay back the bond. Uh, anything left over, then you can assess your citizens. So for easy math, let's just say that the bill for the month is $100. You bring $80 in from the pool, there's still about $20 left over. What that does, it really reduces the burden that goes on to your citizens. Um, I'm still trying to determine the fact if that needs to go to, the, to voter approval or not. I do not have that information right now. But there are different kind of funding mechanisms we can use as far as bonding types goes. So I'm going to finish out this uh, another outline I have uh, for council that details these different kinds of bond structures. Um, my understanding of it too is council wanted it on the next general next election in May. Um, just be warranted that when you kind of put stuff on a May ballot, you get a lot of senior citizens come out to vote. And if council ends up going with that general obligation bond, you're going to assess their property taxes, you might want to wait until November because you're going to have a lot more people come out and vote. Um, another way to look at it is if it does fail that first time around, you have a second go around in November to catch that. Ultimately, it's up to council. That would be, it's, it's a strategy session really is what it is when it comes down to it. But let me at least give council some information about the different bonding structures. We'll take it from there. And then like, we can stick with that May deadline. We'll probably have to do some legislation before this year is over, at least start the process, so we have time to get it to the Board of Elections. Um, love, the, love, love the fact you guys are thinking about that. Um, but again, just let me get some different bonding stru structures to you, then we can make an informed decision. Um, solar panels, planning board just made the recommendation to amend our zoning code for some solar panel regulations. And it's, it's a perfect time because really when we look at the solar panels, they're really starting to come out now. People are getting them on their rooftops. We don't have any really governing laws about how they're installed, what they gotta look like, et cetera, et cetera. So Brian, our planning director, uh, took time out to look at other cities, drafted some code. He did present that to the planning board. Planning board did that, right, make that recommendation to you guys. That is in the packet today. Along with the little outline of what we do, this is according to our code. So even though the planning board just made that recommendation, it does have to sit a, a little bit of time before council can do anything with it. So we do have a tentative outline. Well, it's not tentative. The legal ad has already been put out. So we'll have the public hearing and introduction of the ordinance on November 4th. And again, that's just an introduction of public hearing. So if someone wants to come and talk about that ordinance, that is the day to do that. And then on November 18th, the legislation will be in front of council. Once that legislation, if it is approved, it does take 30 days to become effective. Most of our legislation is 15. Our code states that any change to that planning and zoning code does take 30 days. So um, that will come effect 30 days after should council approve it. But again, take a look at those much needed, kind of overdue, but I'm glad we're getting them on the books. Uh, sorry, I'm kind of winded today. Clark County Land Bank Habitat for Humanity Homes. I got a call late last week um, Clark County Land Bank is having a hard time getting the two other houses built. For those, Ms. Grow, we have council last year sold Clark, oh, you're, are you familiar with the project? They're four right parcels? By my house. They are, you're right, you're right, that's great. <laughs> so we have two other parcels left to be developed. Those are supposed to be developed by Clark County Land Bank. When they put these houses out to bid, the bids came back to be like $500,000 for one home to build which is astronomical and well above their budget. So they are kind of thinking outside the box, uh, box to figure out how we can get it done. I suggest that they call Arbor Homes and D.R. Horton to see if we can have one of those developers who's building multiple hundreds of homes in our city partner with the land bank to get it done. There was discussion, it got pretty far, but at the end of the day, that deal did not go through. So we're back to square one. So what is going to be done is Clark County Land Bank is actually gonna donate those two parcels of land to Habitat for Humanity, and then Habitat for Humanity is gonna finish out the two builds. Um, that could take some time. They do have to locate the family, do the sweat equity. My understanding of this, talking to Norm, uh, they already have one family um, out of Springfield that's close to having all the sweat equity in, so it may not be too long, but unfortunately the land bank just cannot do the project anymore. Um, so as long as they operate within the guidelines of the BZA and the planning board and council as far as their setbacks, they should be good to go. Um, once we get a design on that house, we'll, we'll, send, it, we'll sh uh, send it off to council so you guys can get a visual. But there is no intention of changing any layout. The first two habitat homes are habitat homes as well. Um, and actually the design that they approved, you guys approved the setbacks on were actually outlines of a habitat home to begin with. So no issues with fitting a house in there, it's just who, really who's building it. Uh, one more update for everyone, and I swear it's the last one. Uh, ordinance for LED removal project. So we're gonna utilize the work sessions. We're gonna have to name them special, work, special meeting slash work session. 
Uh, we would like to introduce and vote on uh, two ordinance, uh, one ordinance, I'm sorry, uh, intro on 1028 and action on 1111. And what that is, if I can give you some backstory on that, the lead removal project we're doing that Mr. Kierko got that great grant for. So we have to put that out to bid to award a contractor. Those bids are going out tomorrow and again on 1015. Once those bids are in, we award it, we have to have a legislation to do that. This project is under a time frame to get that legislation back to the uh, agency we need to get, need to get it back to. So therefore, we need to utilize these uh, work sessions to get some council ordinances done. So that being said, we would like to intro on 1028 and vote on November 11th. I'll get with the clerk of council. She can amend the legal ad if she has not get it out already to say that we would be introducing legislation for 1028 and action on 1111. Again, that's a massive project for our city. It's like $2 million in grants. It's going to remove some lead from our older, older facilities. So great, great work for Mr. Kitko. I do believe that's all I have for my city manager report. I would entertain any <clears throat> questions. All right. Any questions? Go ahead, Bill. Mr. Bridge, the, yes. the lead removal project, does that include homes? Yes. Just up to the meter or past the meter? I mm, think just up to the meter, but I could be wrong about that. Okay. Anyone else? Mm-hmm. Um, from my understanding, with uh, Miami, is it Miami Valley Lighting? Is that mm -hmm. what it's called? Um, they're going up in price, correct? It depends on what you're looking at. We have different kind of fixtures for different kind of light poles and stuff like that. There's different rates for our street lighting in our actual streets than what we have downtown. So, Have you ever considered looking into Kendall Electric? Mm. Lighting because that's what everybody like the Air Force uses mm -hmm. um, the entire city of Dayton Centerville all the hospitals in the area and they have pretty good prices and they really work with people I didn't know if you'd be I've never to, heard of them to be honest with you no they're out in Vandalia mm. I didn't know if you'd be willing to just check out their prices to see how competitive they are yeah I think it's too late for this contract cycle but mm -hmm. for coming up for sure uh, yeah. do you know if they do any city work or are they just federal because most of the cities that use lighting, it uses Miami Valley. So I'm curious to know if there's any kind of federal regulation with cities that or not. Cities use them, so I'm not sure oh, okay. how to answer that. I just know. Ken Kendall? Like K-E-N-D-E-L-L? -L? Uh, K-E-N-D-A-L-L. -L. I just Google it. They're a really good company that treats their employees really well. Mm -hmm. And um, I just know that my husband works for them and they provide for the base and everything else and mm -hmm. hospitals yeah smaller electric companies and all the light bulbs and everything mm -hmm. and i know that their their pricing is very competitive and if we could save our constituents a little bit of money i would love to do that it might be nearly impossible i'll look at the pricing but the problem is is that mm -hmm. miami valley lighting owns the street poles in here so okay. we don't own those okay so for some of the new company to come in they'll have to rip those out put new lights in so i don't know how that works when transfer of power I have comes absolutely in absolutely no idea me neither so i'm going to look into I'd, it i just thought i'd throw it and, out there and you're right try um, to save some money if for sure possible. for sure um but yeah i will definitely look into that and like i said i don't know how they work when they switch companies they just kind of i have no idea switch off the utility <laughs> like this is now yours or what but yeah definitely look into it for sure thanks for that information never even heard of them anyone else if not, we'll go to committee reports. And Mr. Fields, have you got anything to say? I don't have anything. Y'all got it already. Send it okay. It's coming at you. That's one on the, on the solar. All right. Play the slate tonight. I hope y'all pass it. It's, it's good. It's a good. With it's that, good. I will entertain uh, comments from members of the public. If you will come up to the podium. Name and address. <clears throat> Hello, y'all. My name is Bob Stevens. I've been in town since 2011, my wife since 2002. And my water bill has always been paid on time. <laughs> there was one day, I believe it was, and I'm not even sure if I'm in the right place. This is my first council meeting I've ever been to. But I thought this would be a start, whether it's right or wrong, me being here. But uh, I know on September 25th or 26th, that'd be a Wednesday or Thursday, 
I did have the day remembered there before I went to St. Charles, but I know one of those days, um, it was around 9.30 in the morning, and I walked out of the marathon station. And when I walked out, and about a third of the way through the parking lot, because I was parked at the edge by the street in the parking lot, and I'm like, holy S word. I couldn't believe it. What I saw was, I know, I just know it was a red utility vehicle. I, I believe the lights might have been on. I'm trying to remember whether the siren was on or not, but regardless, in my mind, that, that makes no difference because this car was going so fast. I've never seen one go faster in an emergency. I instantly thought 80 miles an hour, instantly, at least. And my first thought was 100 miles an hour, but I'm like, I don't know. But I know it wasn't 70, I know it wasn't 65, I know it wasn't 50. And the next thing I thought was him coming that fast past Marathon, how fast was he? He was going the southbound, or northbound, I'm sorry, on 235. And I'm like, how fast was he going through that intersection at Speedway? Because I'm like, he could have been, maybe didn't been doing 45 or whatever, and then just punched it, and maybe got up to 80, I don't know. But anyway, it was like, uh, I never seen anything like it. So. I just kind of let go. I told a couple people when I was at PNC Bank about 1.30 that day. I'm like, would you girls in here this morning? And they, yeah, we always work this morning. I said, did you happen to see a red utility vehicle? Oh, I know. I know. I was talking. I could not believe. So I know the speed was high then. Is that code? Yeah, it was an emergency. How fast was he going through the intersection? And I'm not exaggerating. It wasn't no 65 miles an hour. We're talking about 80, I don't know. But this thing went by so fast, I'm like, like I said, I went, holy, I couldn't believe it. Now, my first thought was, well, matter of fact, it bothered me so much. Within a few minutes, I went, I drove out 235 North, all the way out to 41, matter of fact just to see if I seen the car or lights or something going on somewhere. I was just going to mention something to him, you know. I didn't ever see anything on my way back. There was, um, I guess they might have had a call a few minutes later. It was Bethel Township. They was at the home, the nursing home or whatever out there. Yeah. Whatever, I was going to, to the group. I pulled in. I'm like, Did, do you have any idea if, if you guys had a call or if it was New Carlisle, or, well, they seemed to know that New Carlisle had a call right before them. And I don't feel ashamed to saying this, but they said, I, they seemed to know, know who I was talking about, and they said, yep, this has happened before. He's been warned. However, word she used it a couple of times before. Now, if he was going 60 miles an hour down through there, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't acted how I did. But I'll tell you what: if he would have been down where they're building the Taco Bell right now, and somebody would have pulled out of that alley on the other side, it'd been death. Somewhere, there would be no way around it, and because they wouldn't have had time. He would have been way down there when, when they pulled out. They wouldn't have seen him or whatever. I, that's all I could think was. I mean, death could have happened instantly, <clears throat> out of control. No control over doing that. So that's all I got to say. And I guess you guys might be able to figure out who it was or whatever. But it wasn't good. All right, Mr. Stevens. Let me have uh, city manager and fire chief look into this and consequently uh, see what the story is. That way we can 
back yours up. Not that I'm doubting you. <laughs> but I just want to know that we're on the gro same page yeah. when we do something on this. And it made me feel really good when I walked in PNC Bank at 1.30 in the afternoon and asked him if they was working that morning. And okay. I, but, all I mentioned was, did you happen to see a red utility bill? And then everything was on them, how they acted. They, you, they was like, oh, I know. So and so, didn't you see? Because they could not believe in my mind, I read that the speed that it went by them. So, and that's what I'm here for. There, I there, appreciate your comments. There's no sense in that. Oh, there's no me. doubt of my word. So it wasn't a utility vehicle. It was our staff command vehicle for our fire and EMS department. It was responding to a call at Bancrest. Um, I am just now learning of the incident as we sit here as we speak. So I'm going to let Fire Chief uh, comment on the incident a little bit. I am going to be looking to the matter further, and I'll, I'll email counsel the update if it is, if it is appropriate. Right. I heard I was not I was not on that call, but I was informed of it. And as soon as I was informed of it, I pulled that person that was driving the vehicle. He was informed a, of him going fast. Yes. Okay. And I they were counseled and reprimanded for it, and know that if it happens again, they will no longer work here. And I had no, I had no idea. No, was and it, the, there's a, yes, we are allowed to go above and beyond speed limits. Oh, I know that. But, <laughs> but it's also called due regard. Oh, I know. And I, I, I told the person, you were not driving with due regard. Mm -hmm. There was no reason to be going the speed that you were going. They were in the wrong, and they were reprimanded and counseled for it. Okay. Yeah, as long as he doesn't do it again, because that would just, do it again, they won't work. That would just, yeah, I mean, if he does do it again, that might be bad news. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, yeah, Mr. Thank you. I want to start by thanking Mayor Cook for offering to pick up a letter from me. I didn't think I was going to be able to attend tonight. Um, I was able to switch my work schedule around. Um, dear Council, good evening. My name is Kylie Cook. I have no relation to Mayor Cook. None at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm a resident of 214 North Adams Street here in New Carlisle, and I'm writing this letter to make a formal complaint against the city of New Carlisle. In attempts to address my concerns, I contacted Code Enforcement Officer Dylan Driscoll, who chose to laugh at my concerns while speaking to him on the phone on October 4th, 2024. I encourage you to verify this. According to the city manager, all of the city calls are recorded. Do you want to know what's not funny to me? It wasn't funny when I walked into my living room and found my dad dead. It wasn't funny when I started CPR on him while I waited for the ambulance to show up. It wasn't funny when my neighbor began approaching me while I was outside in my garden complaining about issues with my property shortly after his passing. We've been neighbors since my dad and I moved in in 2018. And it surely wasn't funny when I began receiving violations from the city due to this neighbor complaining about fence posts that have been in my yard for over 15 years. 15 years. My dad and I moved into this home on March 23rd, 2018. I've lived here for over six years and this home was foreclosed on for three years prior to his purchase. On July 24th, 2024, I received a notice to remove fence posts from around my vinyl fencing. I left a message for planning director Brian Moore on August 9th, 2024, to discuss the fence post that is up against my house, as I'm afraid it will affect my foundation of the house if I remove it. I never received a phone call back regarding this matter. Not even a month after all fence posts were removed, excluding the one that butts up against the house, I received another violation from the city on September 18th, 2024 for my garage to be repainted and repaired. If you take a look right across my alley, you can see the city's fire station storage building that has paint that is chipping far worse than my garage. I do have pictures that I've included if you would like to see them. I contacted Code Enforcement Officer Dylan Driscoll in regards to this issue and was told I just needed to repaint the garage. I attempted to contact him again in regards to these matters on September 25th. I sent an email that went unanswered. On October 2nd, I left a voicemail and sent an email to Dylan in which both went unreturned. I sent another email on October 3rd, which also went without a response. On October 4th, I sent an email asking why he doesn't respond in which he called me. 
He started laughing when I asked why he doesn't return emails or phone calls, and when asked if something was funny, he stated, yeah, a little bit. Is this the type of personnel you want working in your community? When citizens have concerns, do you want your code enforcer laughing at them? New Carlisle is not an HOH. We do not live in condos. I want to know why the citizens are held to different expectations than the city. Through research, I learned the minimum annual income for a family to live comfortably in New Carlisle is $38,520, with the average person bringing in $24,435. I'm a single woman and have been hit back to back with violations that I have to financially cover. If the city is going to send out violations and charge you with a misdemeanor and fine you if these violations aren't taken care of on their time frame, then they should be held accountable in returning phone calls and emails. Being laughed at by code enforcer Dylan Driscoll is completely uncalled for and ill-mannered. I do want to note that planning director Brian Moore took the time to take my phone call on his day off after being treated so poorly by Dylan. Brian and I have cleared up our issues with communication and I appreciate his willingness to speak to me on his day off. I used to enjoy living in New Carlisle, but I no longer want to participate in any of the events this town offers, which brings me to the next issue. If we are unable to provide adequate law enforcement staffing during the Heritage of Flight Festival, then we should not be hosting this event. Saturday evening, I was completely blocked in my driveway and our law enforcement did nothing to help with this situation. It was, in fact, escalated by Deputy Pennington when he arrived. As you can see, my driveway was completely blocked off, not just a little bit. I'm well aware that these situations don't affect any of you personally, so I know it's of no importance, but it does matter to me. I hope this city will take the necessary efforts to improve their wrongdoings. Thank you for your time for listening to my concerns. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Bill. On behalf of myself, I apologize for the way you was treated. And on behalf of the city, I hope they look into the way you was not receiving communication back. And on the police department, I believe there's a law that's saying you cannot park within three foot of any driveway. So that deputy should have had that vehicle towed, in my opinion, to get you out in case you had an emergency. Thank you. Myself, I'd had a tow truck there and had to move it. Or I would have ran into it and moved it with my truck. That's how I felt. That's exactly what I would have done. Thank you. The, the, uh, the actions of code enforcement, uh, course enforcement officer Drillin, or Dylan. Dylan, uh, I hope will be addressed. Thank you. Because no citizen, when they call these people, these people should be returning their call. And I commend, uh, I forgot his name. Uh, Brian. Brian, yes. for calling you on his day off. Yes, thank you. So I'm sorry you had to go through that. I appreciate it. And hopefully it. this council will see that things are done better. Thank you. Is it Kylie? Yeah. I am very, very sorry for the passing of your father. Thank you. And everything that you have been enduring with the city and that you got blocked in. None of that is okay. And I apologize. I appreciate it. On my behalf as well. And I hear you and I see you. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Bond. I'd like to also apologize to you. The one thing that <clears throat> hopefully we can all agree on too is if we're not, when you brought up the, you know, the, the pain at the fire station, if it's fire station, if it's the city building, whatever, we need to hold ourselves to the same I, right. I think I think that, that, that has see, already this is been my garage and this is addressed. The city building. Yeah. I was going to interject. So, so the garage that we had at the fire station, as I spoke with her, as I found this out Friday and gave her a call personally, as I explained to her and I'll explain to council as we discussed, we didn't know what we're going to do with that garage, so we're not going to put any money into it. And I actually explained to Mrs. Cook, now that we know, Fire I'm Chief is working on getting it fixed. So. I'm looking into this. It is a long process. I will talk to Mr. Kitko. Mr. Kitko is over code enforcement. Um, I will be downloading a lot of voicemails and a lot of computer stuff, traces. Um, can I have a copy of that letter? Do you mind? Sure, I have a copy on my email. Awesome. I appreciate that. And then I will just get back with the council if it's warranted. Um, as I told Ms. Cook Friday, now that I'm involved, I want to go somewhere. 
but everything is I haven't listened to anything yet it's been a very busy day so we're gonna start that process this week and if it if it came out and I'm not saying anything wrong I just don't know I don't know there's two sides it will be taken care of swiftly and accurately and uh, if this is how it went down mm -hmm. I will swiftly take action on that I've Thank done you. it already once this year with the whole employee mm -hmm. I can do it again mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Go ahead. I got I just wanted to sincerely apologize as well. Thank you. Okay. I appreciate it. Sure. Go ahead, Bill. Mayor Kathy? Bill. Either one. Uh, one thing that would have been helpful while you were speaking to us to let us know that the city manager did speak with you, and I know since he's involved, believe me, things will be taken care of, and there won't be any need for action from council because he will address the problem and he will do a fact finding uh interviews or whatnot to see exactly what did happen awesome. not that we we don't believe you because i think this council believes the citizens when they come to us with a complaint now it's back in the city's hands uh the manager's hands and he was just made aware of it uh, i assume friday that's when I spoke to Dylan, actually. That's when it, okay. it happened. So the, the city manager will, will address these issues. Thank you. And sorry just, for your loss of your father thank also. You. No, that was hard, yeah. Mm. I just wanted to say I, I thank you for coming and letting us know. It's important to council to know this kind of stuff so we can help you work with it. And anytime you or anybody else has a problem, please come to us and bring it to our attention so we can make things better, hopefully. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Jessica, can you write down your phone number? I know I called it once, and then also when is the best time to get a hold of you? Because I think you said you had a, a challenging work schedule. Um, I want to mention, but honestly, just depends on okay. the day. Sure. So no I'm, problem. Just, I'm just going to write that. Okay. Thank you. Oh, 214 North Adams. Yeah. Mrs. Cook, oh. what was your address? 214 North Adams Street. Gotcha. That's what I need. All right. Again. I guess I'm supposedly the spokesman for this group. I will apologize, untold, as you and I had a discussion, and I thought it was a very good discussion. When I asked you to get the letter ready for me, I intended to bring it up tonight. You saved me that. <laughs> Thank Go you. Ahead, babe. I want to offer my condolences also. Thank you. And, um, and you're right. So you should be held to the same standards as the citizens. And I know that now that a decision has been made on that garage for the fire station, the chief is taking care of it. So. And I don't, I've called the sheriffs um, to make a report of the way I was treated by Officer Pennington, but um, they did say they're going to review the body cams. I, my neighbor actually came over when he came the second time because he felt so uncomfortable with how he was speaking to me when he came to the house. So that will also be addressed. Thank you. Good. He did say the body cams were on and when I asked for his name, he said there was a gun call so he had to leave and he was all the way down the sidewalk. I asked for his name and he charged back down to me and I'd never been spoken to so disrespectfully. So I just don't understand what's going on. And let us address it thank you with you and i appreciate okay. you thank you here. mrs appreciate cook do you have uh, extra you. copies of the blockage of your driveway uh, uh yes i have it in my phone you can have all of this if you want yeah i'm gonna need it thank you, <coughs> thank you. <laughs> oh thank you thank, thank you. you thank, thank you, you. Yeah. anyone else Go ahead. My name's Fields. Y'all know me. You know where I live. I want to remind you about your sheriff's department. You have codified ordinances for this city. Those boys don't pay attention to them. That lady right there had a car sitting in her driveway. There's an ordinance that covers that. That boy could have a record. Pick that up and take it right out of there. But he didn't do it. Why? Because they don't enforce the ordinances for this city. I know I did them for 14 years. And Mr. Fields has been here once before and brought a lot of information that 
the deputies need to enforce this. We already did this once, remember? I, okay, I know. first off, gentlemen. I've been there. We've done this. Gentlemen. Go they're, ahead. They're police officers. That is their discretion to enforce the law. No. Absolutely. It is not. Yes, it is. If it's not in the contract, we will put it in there. They will. F it's a law. We have the laws in our case. But it's up to the individual officer to if they want to enforce that law or not. How can you blatantly ignore that? I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying this is this is what I've been told before. Okay. So you know. I just don't so, see why they blatantly ignore stuff. Well, he had to go to another call, so I'm going to get to the bottom of that too. But anytime I brought this up, it's police discretion. So I'll get with uh, Jake, and we'll have an answer. We are. Are we not in the process of doing a contract with the sheriff's department? They already. It, they already enforce our law. They force our codes, but yes, we're in the process of negotiating. I will make a motion. Mr. Mayor, Matt, go Mr. ahead. Mr. Bridge, mm -hmm. you just said that they, all right, their discretion to enforce our codes and the laws of this state. I highly disagree with that. And then you said, that they do enforce our codes in the city. So which is it? Do they do it or don't they do it? Well, that's the meaning of discretion is that person has the ability to say yes or no, and they enforce our codes because they push people into our mayor's court based off our codified ordinances. That's why I made that comment. I'm being telling council what I've been told by the police department anytime I've had issues with them enforcing our code. That's all I was stating. May I ask who's telling you this? Multiple. Get lost. Bug. Multiple, people. Mean? multiple people. Then I guess my question. I would it, think things will change soon. I hope things will change soon. I am pretty positive. Of you and I are hoping the same thing, sir. So, uh, in in lieu of that comment I just made, Mr. Mayor, I know you're getting ready to make a motion. Go ahead. Hold off on that till January six. All right. I think you read my mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Anyone else? If not, may I no. go through my laundry list? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I have here a picture, and I only have one, so we're going to have to pass this back of a pool from St. Henry. A billion dollar pool? They are a community of about 2,500 people. Wow. It's a very nice pool. Yes. I intend to make a trip up to St. Henry and find out how they're doing as far as money, operating the pool, et cetera, et cetera so that we can possibly have a little bit more knowledge on what we're doing with our pool. And at that point, um, I will bring this information back to you. I have invited Mr. Bridge and the Vice Mayor to accompany me, and we're going to try and set that up. That's number one. Number two, I have been apprised of a company wanting to put a solar farm into the Indian Lake area. Consequently, from what I understand, the Indian Lake area is not too receptive about this. The company is touting a $10 million, I guess the word is package, to give to the area up there. And it also will mean a reduction in electric rates. I would like to get council's approval to contact this company and see if they would like to come down and meet with us and possibly look at putting a solar farm somewhere in our neighborhood. I'd be a no on that. I'd be a yes on that. <laughs> Any other comment? I would be a yes on that. 
the only way is if it's going to be non-productive ground somewhere. Mm -hmm. Is the only way I would be in favor of it. If it's, well, you know. all we're doing is doing an informational type situation mm -hmm. at that point. Nothing's been discussed as far as here, there, wherever, or a dollar spent. All right, I'm. That's my thought. I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to look at the opportunity. The other thing is, uh, there was a little discussion on the streets in regards to some donations for the people at down south around Asheville, North Carolina, in there. What's council's thoughts about what? Setting up a couple of uh, donation trailers, I talked with Medoc a little bit. He's going to be making a couple more runs down there. We might be able to partner up with him and take supplies down to them. Donated from the community? Donated from the community. Normally, if I may, sir, normally in times of disasters like what's happening in the uh, Carolinas and it's going to be happening in Florida again the uh, the churches and Red Cross and stuff steps up and, and does those type of things <clears throat> I personally I don't care if we have a place we can park a, a trailer and the citizens wants to donate goods food water you know whatever I I don't have a problem with that but I, you know I'm just one one vote Anyone else? Any ideas where we'd park a trailer at? Well, a trailer at? I looked at a couple of thoughts, and one of them was if we could come up with an empty storefront downtown, maybe we could make a drop-off point, <coughs> and at that point then load up whatever we would get at a given point in time. Now, that's one thought. The other would be to park a trailer I would assume that probably around Deems service station there, we could probably park a trailer. But that's hyperventilating without talking to the gentleman. So I just wanted to run that by council. I think more information on logistics and codes and stuff would be in order, I think, for that. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Vaughn. Is there somebody that's heading this up and is just looking for us to give them a spot to No, it was it was or? a standpoint of the fact that knowing Mr. Medoc as well as I do, <clears throat> he's been involved with making a couple of runs down there. And consequently, if we can pal marry up with somebody, at that point, we're going to save trying to find transportation. Now, I don't know whether or not he would want some money for as far as gas type thing, but that's to be explored. Yeah, I don't know. Just off the top of my head, it just seems I just, a little logistically tough unless there's a point person that's going to be there to collect it, make sure it's secure, all and of that. So hey. we, might, we might end up with... Uh, some of the churches giving us that kind of help. Um, I don't know. It's it's just an off the wall thought. I looked at uh, the Fox Channel quite a bit and seeing the devastation that's down there. Um, those people need our help. And I'll be honest with you. I don't think there's a lot of help coming out of the federal yeah. government at this point so it's going to fall back on the citizens um i know jerry and mindy they're friends of mine and i wonder the church i used to go to had it would put a semi truck in their parking lot and we would fill it up in the community i went to a church up in tip city that did that and i wonder if one of the churches would let us park the trailer there and what would happen is like maybe we could get mr max to take in the donations and somebody come and pick them up and take them to the trailer at the end of the day that way the trailer's not open all the time that's just a just a thought putting it out there any and all thoughts are appreciated at this point 
I know, uh, I don't know, Chief, have, have you gotten any donations there at the fire station? No, sir. Okay. No, oh, I took mine to Gary. Okay. All right, I'll, go ahead, Bill. I know a guy that owns a trucking company. He, uh, he told me that he took a load of donated stuff down I, Iceland, I think it was. Might have been northern Florida. Uh, but the uh, government, the uh, management is confiscating everything. They don't want individuals to give them anything. They want it all to come from FEMA. So that's what, what he told me. I have not heard anything on the news about it. But then I don't get to watch the news a, a lot uh, like I used to. So if anybody's heard anything like that, that, that would be interesting to know. The, uh, but I know uh, a lot of people from uh, in Ashland was taking things in privately and they was turned away. They, they wouldn't let them in. And well, I think these are things that we possibly can investigate and talk to your source. Right. Go ahead, Peg. I have a friend that's down there right now and they are not having any problems at all with people accepting donations. Oh no, the people will take them. <laughs> they can get and them in. And they're not being taken, the donations they have are not being taken away okay. from Is this them. in Asheville? I, Asheville, I heard Asheville. it's only specifically one city that FEMA is not allowing to come in, and I think Jerry would probably know what that is. Could very well be. That could be the city he's talking about. I, I just yeah. said Asheville. Asheville. Because yeah. that's the one that was hit the hardest. All right, has anybody got anything else before we go to the ordinance and resolutions? Go ahead, Mr. Bond. <clears throat> the only thing in Peggy, I don't know if you want to talk about this now, but you know, we had tentatively set for an executive session this what, Wednesday and Thursday mm -hmm. for the city manager's review. And I just didn't know, I don't know if we're still on that timeline or um, that was the 10th and 11th? Uh, I had it as the 8th and 9th, or 9th and 10th. Is what I, had. I think it was the 10th and 11th. 10th and 11th would be Thursday and Friday. It was 9th and 10th. So no, we had it Wednesday and Thursday, 9th yeah, and 10th. And 10th Wednesday, Thursday, 9th and 10th. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, Mr. Bond, do you mind if I make a comment for you guys to discuss? Go ahead. Um, I think we need to do it right. This is the first time out of the gate. So if council is willing to push it back because I have some personal things I got to deal with now that came up, um, I'm willing to forego the November deadline if, if we need to, just so we can get it right out the gate. Because I think how we establish it this time around is going to be the formula that council uses from here on out to review your managers. And it's a new thing because we haven't really done this before in this, this kind of setting. So. Um, this week may be tough for me too if council is thinking about pushing it back just because of the issue with my canine. Um, but again, if this does go past November, I'm more than willing to um, forego that minimal 3% because it wasn't done before November. Mr. Mayor. This year only. If you'll put that in a letter, sure. send it to Jake, have Jake email it out to us. I don't have a problem with it. I, don't I, would, I would like to put by the end of the year in there. Give okay. us a deadline, a new deadline or whatever. But sure. I think I think by the end of the year is a reasonable mm -hmm. right. thought to, for us to shoot for. Mm -hmm. And it, I think on your end would be appropriate. Sure. You know, I think it's good to have your review done. Mm -hmm. I think we both got to give a little bit to get it, to get it done. So three so, percent is really nothing. Um, so I don't know if you guys still want to. We probably need to have an executive session before too long. In my, I mean, Peggy, I'm I'm not leading this thing. I'm. You asked me to help you, so. I, well, I think you're right. We need to get an executive session together so that we can at least go over the format that we've found mm -hmm. to see if council agrees with the. Yeah. Review. Tweak it a little bit or whatever we. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. This, if, if Go we ahead. Can, can we use one of these days to do that? Yeah. Just one day, just to get the ball rolling. Thing. Do you want to do the tenth? Yeah, the tenth would work. 
It's Thursday mm -hmm. night. Mm -hmm. And the manager don't have to be here for that if he doesn't yeah. want to be. Uh, well, you guys we're just going to look at so. forms. Yeah. Well, that's, that's your guys' you know, So I, I think, yeah, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Make me a motion. I made it. Second. Right. Do you need me to read? So, no, we're so going to. The motion is to cancel the executive meeting on Wednesday the 9th and keep with the Thursday the 10th. Right. To do your own review of the city manager. Uh, so to do review our procedure. forms that we're going to use. Okay. Template. Work on the yeah the template, template the protocol. Work on a template. Whatever you want to call it. However you want to work that. Still at six o'clock. Six. Yes. Six o'clock. I think we're six. Here. Yeah. Six. Email. Okay. So, Councilwoman, right? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. <clears throat> Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grove? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Chief? Yes. Mr. Seven Mayor. to zero. Go ahead, Bill. Uh, Councilman Shammy asked that was at 6 o'clock, but I have it on my calendar for the 9th and 10th. At 7 p.m. So I we have. still want to keep it at 7. That's fine. That, that'll be okay. I I have no problem with <laughs> okay. whatever time you want. If council's good with seven, we'll keep it at seven for Thursday night. Yeah. It's right. seven. Do we need to correct that motion or? I didn't put a time in it. All right. The, the I mean, original one was fine. Like the. Yeah, the original was 7 p.m. Yeah. So the legal right. had already ran for 10 10, so it's safe. With that, mm -hmm. council has nothing else. We'll go to the resolutions. I do have one thing I wanted to bring up. Um, no. If that's okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um, the get my words together here. When the recordings, uh, the videos come out of us, and it's usually the general meetings but not always the um well i won't, don't want to say special but the uh where, where's work my word that they gone away work session work sessions thank you very much yeah so yeah i would like to ask if we could share all those every time with everybody unless they are executive sessions i would just like a, a consistent and an open policy about sharing videos with the public that's that's what i was wanting to ask I know. So we do not professionally record those, and it was my understanding that when we had the retreat, you guys discussed this with Wheat Bells. You guys, that is your time to get together. Councils, I mean, public's welcome, but it was not to be recorded for the public, um, and we record it for the purpose of doing minutes. That was my recollection of it, which is why we don't put the work sessions up. Now, if you do like a council special meeting, that'll come up for like appointments. But that was my understanding of it. Miss Wright did voice her opinion on that in the email. So really, it's up to you guys, however you want to do it. Just keep in mind, we do not have the young man there. So if we do put them on uh, um, YouTube, they'll just be like a set pan just right on council. I'm okay with that. I, I just want to be very open with the public and I don't think we see anything that is detrimental to anybody when we discuss things up here. So for me, that's what I would like to see. I just like an open book policy, pretty much. Nobody else? <laughs> would like, someone like to make a motion on that? We can do whatever you guys would like to do. I'll motion. I motion that we record all sessions except for executive and post on YouTube. So you're going to record all sessions except executive sessions and post all of them on YouTube. Well, we, we, we oh, I'm oh, sorry. We don't record. This records, but that don't. Sorry. Okay. Um, Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. Reluctantly, yes. Councilwoman Grove? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Pass seven to zero. Okay. okay, anything more before we go to the resolution? <clears throat> okay. 
Uh, resolution 2024-12R, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. Resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into agreement with the Board of Commissioners of Clark County regarding opio opioid settlement funds. Seven. I have a motion and a second. Any comment? Nope. I have one question. What's that? How much money are we give to the county? Um, it's either going to be anywhere from, I'll be very honest, I don't know what pot of this is coming from. If it's from the original legis uh, lawsuits we got um, a couple years ago, the Walgreens, the Kroger, there's another company in there too. I can't remember the name of it. It'd be around 24000 to 22000 If it's the one we just entered, those have not been released yet. But it will be significantly less than the 24, 22 to 24 because it's one entity opposed to multiple coming in. And again, we're just passing this through. The explanation of this resolution, may I continue? Um, we entered to a law to get some opioid settlement. Um, so there's a lot of stipulations when it comes to receiving that money and how you have to use it. It is very stringent. So we don't have the resources here. So we're just going to pass that money on through the county so the county can use it for the appropriate purposes. Any comment before you vote? Um, Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grove? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Seven to zero pass. I will check to see if they have released the disbursements amount for the Kroger lawsuit as of last week. They had not. If they, if I see them, I'll pass them on the council so you guys can have that information. Okay. Uh, resolution 2024-13R. Introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. A resolution providing for the payment, permanent transfer of funds from the General Street and American Rescue Funds to the Water Bond Retirement and Cemetery Funds of the City of New Carlisle. Second. Motion and a second. Any comments? I would like an explanation, please. Uh, an explanation of this ordinance is, um, so anytime that we pass a budget, we have to supplement more money to make a payment out of that, any particular line item. Uh, that has to go in front of council for approval. Uh, so these ones, according to the uh, legislation, is a bond retirement fund for the street sweeper we guys got. And then it's employee cash outs from our street department and a couple of that had to use some in general fund money. And then some minor expenses to cover um, charges out of the water fund. So basically this is a general housekeeping uh, legislation that we do anytime that we need to do a transfer or a supplement. What was that, Mr. Lynn? I said we'll have a lot of those before the end oh, of the year. Oh, God. I'm yeah. sorry. I didn't think you heard me or not. Oh, well, it, it, it depends. It Any other comments? No. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grove? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Pass the seven to zero. Two first and second. Under the ordinances? So ordinance 2024-50, uh, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 10-21-24. Uh, an ordinance amending chapter 278 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle by removing it in its entirety and dissolving the Parks and Recreation Board. Okay. You'll read all of these tonight. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Ordinance 2024-51, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 10-21-24. An ordinance amending Chapter 276 of the Codified Ordinances of, the New, Carlisle, of New Carlisle for the purpose of establishing parks and recreation and public service commissions. Ordinance 2024-52 was introduced on 9-16-24, public hearing and action on 10-21-24. Creating the Monroe Meadows Tax Increment Financing Incentive Districts. Declaring improvements to the parcels within each incentive district to be, to be a public purpose and exempt from real property taxation. Requiring the owners of those parcels to make service payments in lieu of taxes. Establishing a municipal public improvement tax increment equivalent fund for the deposit of those service payments. Requiring the distribution of a portion of those service payments to the Tecumseh Local School District and the Springfield Clark Career Technology Center and specifying the public infrastructure improvements that benefit or serve parcels in the incentive district. Ordinance 2024-53, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 1021. 
an ordinance adopting the board and commission's handbook for the city of New Carlisle. Ordinance 2024-54, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 1021-24. An ordinance adopting the disaster recovery and response plan for the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. Ordinance 2024-55, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 1021-24. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into contract for insurance with USI Insurance Services, LLC, representing the public entities pool of Ohio for the administration of said policy. With that, anyone else have anything else? Go ahead, Dave. Since the city is looking for a new place to set off fireworks, um, Heritage of Flight set off their fireworks Saturday night. And I think from the comments I've heard, they were pretty much able to be seen all throughout the city and I spoke to April and she thinks that they will be seen from the pool and I think that we need to get with the Heritage of Life Committee and see who the owner of the property to be able to talk to him to see if he would be willing to let the city use this property also. Do you know Mr. Mayor, go ahead. Do you know who the, who, uh, the property, where the property is located? It's the yeah. house right over the bridge on Milton Carlisle that sits down. Oh, okay. Next to the creek. Uh, I think so. Yeah. <coughs> 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 Whose house is that, Bills? Whose house is that? But I guess I know. wanted to make sure. Council agreed with that before I took any further steps as far as talking to the owner. Mr. Mayor, go ahead, Ben. I think if if he is willing to let the city shoot their display off from there, <clears throat> and it can be seen throughout the city and the pool, I don't have a problem with checking with him and see if he would like to do that. That is borrow his land for one night or two nights a year. Well, the heritage of flight isn't ours, it's Mr. Lowry's. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I, I think it would be a good idea. And, you know, if it rains and real muddy, they, they don't have to worry about getting stuff towed out of any place, possibly. And I, I just, if. Having them set off there would give the opportunity for the <clears throat> business district to be open that night, which would help our businesses and, you know, maybe even do a night market or something. I'm good with kind of finding another location for the fireworks. If he is agreeable to it then uh, at some point I I would think that the city manager would have to have a discussion for an agreement or something I would think uh, so if you need that into a form of a motion I'll make the motion why don't that, well that, why don't we that, back off until we get well I, I'm gonna make a motion to allow okay. her to go, go, talk ahead. go ahead if she wants to if she needs a motion, if she don't need a motion, then we don't we don't have to do that. She can just go talk, as long as council agrees with it. Would, where would all the cars park? I, I guess I don't see where everybody would park. Yeah. Well, they wouldn't be parking where they sent them off at. No, but I'm, I'm I know, understand you have that. How many streets in the Kalisle? Well, I mean, yeah, but that's not a community. That's not that's not a gathering of people. That's just. Okay, but I'm fine with it. I know we need somewhere else. Are we going to have any more blocked driveways? <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> Hopefully that problem is resolved soon. <laughs> I kind of think it will be. I didn't want to invest in a tow truck, but I can. I mean, 
<laughs> She'd have called me. I know a lot of guys that has tow trucks. <laughs> That's a revenue generator opportunity. Like a city it's bought a tow truck. Snatched and grabbed, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would keep the deputy's That's business hurt. kind of for who stole the vehicle. <laughs> Another car for the parade. I <laughs> think. Yep. <laughs> Another one for the junkyard. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. Anybody got anything else? Mayor. Nope. Have council sit on it. Mayor. <clears throat> So let me go ahead, if, Chief. Let me, if I may, Wait a minute, we're, still, I get the we're chief. still on the other subject. If anybody here has a problem with, with Vice Mayor Eggleston checking into this, speak now, forever hold your peace. There you go, man. You got Go ahead, Chief. I just want to remind everybody, the council and citizens, that this Saturday, 12 to 3, is the open house at the fire station. Uh, we're going to have free food. Uh, games and stuff for the kids, um, for the adults there will be door prizes, um, wrap off door prizes. Uh, we're going to do, try, uh, we're lock, locking in to have an auto education uh, demo. Um, we even have a live small pony there for the kids. <laughs> uh, Maybe donate his car for the education? Uh, excuse me? Is the city manager donating his car for the extra? Yeah, both of them, actually. Both have awesome. Which that's one that's would you nice. like? I'll give you my dog car. That way it gets uh, dirty, we don't care. We're also, we also have a door break uh, uh, demo that uh, the kids will actually kind of can, can do that's and fine. actually uh, show see how we break doors in, that type of thing. Uh, but like I said, it's from 12 to 3. Hopefully the weather will pro will work out for it like it did for the festival this past weekend. Mr. Mayor, go okay. ahead. I was wondering, could we? Oh, I'm sorry. Did, okay, I was wondering if we could do the. Um, I, I went to work one place and they taught me how to use the fire extinguisher. Yeah, we can and that do was that. very interesting. We can do and, that. Uh, uh, I like confidence. that's one of those things I would like for the department to look at that purchasing, but there is a trainer. Uh -huh. uh, they're not cheap. <laughs> oh. Any mentions? You're okay. talking about talking about twenty to twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars for them. Yeah. You could just for a fire extinguisher. For a trainer, yes. Do um, you need a trainer? <laughs> <laughs> but we can show some people how to use an extinguisher yeah. without it. It's, it's, just, it's a lot easier when Are they you get on the charge twelve thousand. Yeah, <laughs> teaching how to use fire extinguisher. <laughs> Do that. Oh, the same. Taller, right? We would also. We yeah, also but I think the trip. best thing. Gotcha. I see what you're saying. Is to bring For the John time. Bean back, and put Kathy on the end of that. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> the John Bean. <laughs> Is there that. a dunk booth? I think the mayor would generate a lot of money for the dunk booth. I've been there. <laughs> no, I'll probably generate The only thing we will not have this year is this guy <laughs> right here. <laughs> I'll put me in it. No, no, that, you might make the money. Yeah. That would be the tomato toast. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. As long as it's a good spirit and everyone's having fun, I'm, I'm fine with it. Yeah. Does anybody okay. got anything else before we break this up? <laughs> Move to adjourn. Second. Third. Uh, <laughs> Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilwoman Grove. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Sheen. Yes. We are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>